So now we're going to shade our character. If we go into our drawing tab, we can isolate our line art layer, press K to show strokes, and then use our stroke tool and add shadows this way. And then just fill it in using our shade color, which is a transparent kind of cooler color. And that's one way you could do that is by sort of the same way we did the ear is just by going through all the keys then copying and pasting these strokes and then filling it in. That's definitely a good way to do it. You could also duplicate this layer so that it has the same timing and everything. Move it on top, call it cat shade, and then you want to unpaint and select all frames. And then just unpaint the whole entire animation. You want to make sure to do it on the color layer too. So now you can take this shade layer Grab your paintbrush, and with a semi-transparent color like our shadow, I usually like to have the auto flatten turned on, because if I don't have that turned on, if I draw two strokes on top of each other, they kind of overlap. And that's because they're two separate strokes. And what auto flatten does is it'll combine all these strokes into one shape. So when you're shading your character, that way if you go over some shadows and do some overlapping, it won't make this weird effect. So that's one way to do it. But the way I'm going to show you how to use it is with Toon Boom Harmony Premium using the Tone Node. And if you're using Harmony Advanced, adding a Tone Node is a bit different. So I don't have the advanced version, so I'm looking up the Toon Boom help documentation. But to add your tone, you want to click this plus button. And in the drop down, you want to select Effects and then Tone. And then under your tone, you can click this plus button to expand all of its options. And then to select the layer you want to use as its tone mask, you can do it by dragging your mask layer into the matte setting. And if you want to edit the settings of your tone layer, you can also double click on it and it'll bring up the same settings as the ones we're going to use in the premium setup. So we haven't really gone over our node view that much. And if you don't see the node view, it's under window, node view. And that's because this isn't really a node view tutorial. This is more how to animate frame by frame. But let's just show this part using our node view. So our node view views everything from the top to the bottom as left to right. So these leftmost layers are on the top and on the bottom, you can see like our background and our color card are on the bottom. Everything in red has been disabled, which is the same thing as turning the eyeball on and off on these layers. So the node view is the same as what's going on in our timeline. These are the exact same things, just a different way to look at them. With the node view, you can kind of arrange things into hierarchies and do parenting. Uh, it's really good for doing character rigs. But just for the sake of talking about shading, we're only going to be focused on these two layers. So these are our final cleanup layers, cat color and cat head color. And if you click these arrows, you can see a thumbnail of what these frames look like. And if I go to where there's actually animation on cat head, you can see a thumbnail of what these layers look like. So now let's add shading to them. So I'm going to go into my node library, which I have down here. And if you don't see that, it's under Windows, Node Library. And to search for a node, we can use this search box up here. And we're going to type Tone, T-O-N-E, and it'll come up here. You can also locate it under the Combine section, and it's here, Tone. You can also click and drag this onto your favorites. And that way, if you go into your favorites, all your most used nodes will be here. I use this a lot when I'm using the node view. So we'll drag two tone nodes in, one for each layer. And next, we want to duplicate these layers because we want to keep the same timing. So I'm going to select both layers and go to Edit, Duplicate. And you'll see them down here. I'm going to rename these just so I keep track of what they are. And we'll call these Cat Shade. And right now, they're not connected to my composite, which is kind of like my whole stage. This is everything that's visible. You can see my display node is attached to it, and also my right node, which is way over here, is also attached. This is what renders our composite, and display is what allows us to see what's in the composite. If I were to disconnect the display, for example, you'd see all my layers disappear, and in my camera, there's nothing here. So display allows you to see what's going on. So these layers are floating all by themselves. They're not connected to my composite, which doesn't allow me to see it. And it doesn't show in my timeline either. So what I need to do is I need to drag these blue boxes onto the top of my composite here. And I'll do that for both layers. So now you can see my cat shade and cat head shade layers have showed up. So we want to keep the timing on these layers, but we don't want any actual drawings or animation on it. So we're going to unpaint all the layers by going to our unpaint tool, selecting all frames, then dragging a big circle. 
and I'll need to do the same for my line art layer and my color art layer, or any other layers you may have used. And I'll do the same thing on his cat head layer. So now if we were to turn off our color layers, you'll see our cat shade and our cat head shade layers are still here timing wise, but none of the art shows up, which is exactly what we want. So we'll turn our color layers back on just for clarity's sake. And now we're gonna attach these all together. So to parent a node in between another node, you hold down Alt and click and drag. So now our cat color is intercepted by this tone node. And right now it's not doing anything, so if I were to look at my camera, I'd still see that it's looking the same. And what I actually do when I'm working in the node view, just to make things easier to see, is I have another node view over here on the side. So you can click and drag these windows, and this is a layout that I use a lot, is having my node view on the side. That way, I can adjust my tone and everything and see what's happening on my camera. I can also click on the render view here using this little flower button. And every time I update an effect in my node view, it'll show up in my render view. So that's super useful. That's a good way to work on effects and setting up these kind of shading nodes and everything. So the way we want to set this up is we want our tone layer to be on the way from the cat color to the composite. So that way it passes through our tone layer. And the way we do that is we click and drag and hold the Alt key. And what that does is it'll put it in between any of the frames you want it to be at. So here we want it to connect to cat color and we want it to connect on the right side. So I'll drag it right there. And then we'll use our blank cat shade layer, which has the same timing and everything. And we'll connect it to the left side of our tone layer. So now what that does is our cat color layer is going through our tone node and our tone node is saying to use this layer as a mask for whatever is gonna be shadow. And then it combines those two effects and puts it down into our composite. So now if I were to select my cat shade layer and select any color, it doesn't matter, and just paint over my cat, you'll see it adds a shadow to him. And this tone layer is very powerful because you can not only add a blur to it or no blur, you can also change its color and its intensity. So it's super flexible. It allows you to change your shadow really easily. So we're gonna do an effect of, let's say a dark blue or so. And we'll give it a little more contrast by increasing its alpha. We'll say around 150. And I'm not gonna do a blur because I kinda like that cell shaded look, but you could absolutely put in a blur by just increasing this number here. You can also select whether it's a directional blur or a radial blur. Radial seems to be the easiest to work with. So we'll set that to zero. And if you wanted to invert where your shadows were, like where you painted became the light, you could select invert matte and it'll do the opposite. So your character will be all in shadow, but whatever you paint will become light. Sort of a good way of doing negative painting. Use matte color just keeps the same color. So since we used a green brush, it turns green, which is not what we want. And what multiplicative does is it multiplies the effect with the background layer. So we're just gonna leave our settings just like this and we'll press close. And we're going to set up our cat head color the same way. So again, alt and drag. So it's on the right. And then grab our cat head shade and connect that to the left. So now we're ready to start shading. So now we can grab whatever color we want and start shading. And you can see, even if I go outside the lines, it doesn't affect it. So feel free to be really sloppy with it. You'll also see it's doing that overlay effect that I was talking about earlier. But if you go into your render view, you'll see that actually doesn't affect it. If that bothers you, you can select all by pressing Control A and pressing Control Shift F to flatten it. Or with your black arrow tool, you can select this tool to flatten it. And also, if you have your brush, don't forget you can turn on auto flatten if you don't want it to show up that way. It's a little distracting, so I'd recommend it. And again, when I'm working on shading, I recommend doing the keys first, then doing the breakdowns, and then using your friend copy and paste to make sure your shadows are consistent as much as possible. A wobbly shadow will be pretty noticeable if it's very subtle movement. If it's more of a fast movement, you can get away with a lot more. So just keep that in mind as you're going through and shading. I really like the tone node. It uh, makes shading super easy. And with the shading all finished, this is what our final animation looks like. 
So next we'll move on to animating the moth using motion tweens and frame-by-frame -frame animation combinations.